live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. And welcome back here on theCUBE. We continue our coverage of Dell EMC World 2017. We're live here at the Sands Expo, the Venetian uh, beautiful facility, great show, 13,000 plus attendees, a record number there, turning out for this three-day event. Along with uh, Paul Gill and I'm John Walls, nice to have you with us. And we're joined now by, um, I think a gentleman that we can all relate to, at least from the MasterCard perspective, the credit card perspective, uh, Nick Kukuru, is the Vice President of Big Data Practice. Nick, thanks for being with us, we appreciate the time. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, especially at this particular event. Yeah, good, and Tony Parkinson, who is the VP of Sales and Systems Engineering at Dell EMC. And Tony, good to see you, sir. Yeah, great to be here, John, thank you. So let's relate, first off, before we get into what you know, machine learning and what you guys are doing with it. Let's just set the big picture here, credit cards, right? Uh, Paul and I were talking about it. We've, we've been victimized, unfortunately, many people are. How big is the, 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 the fraud business, if you will, the detection business for you? How critical is that for you in MasterCard? Well, for us at MasterCard, the biggest thing is always making sure the people that use a MasterCard are protected. So we at MasterCard take that particular, whether it's fraud, anti-money laundering, that we take that individual and we are stewards of what that person has entrusted us with. We're stewards of their data, we're stewards of how their experience that they have with it. So we want to always make sure, from a fraud perspective especially, that they're protected. We're doing everything we can to make sure the person who uses that card is the person that has that card. Right, so again, when you look at fraud, it is one of the biggest plays that the cyber attacks happen because it's an easy way to make money quickly. Sure. Right? And for us, it's the ability to say, how can we stay one step ahead because the fraudsters themselves are just as smart as we are. They're, they're graduating from some of the top universities worldwide. Uh, they are carrying and going through a lot. They're doing big data and analytics themselves. Mm -hmm. So they are getting more sophisticated. They are getting more complicated. They are, they are absolutely, this is a big business for fraudsters worldwide. So in this, this kind of cyber arms race that you're talking about here a bit, um, machine learning, how does that come in into play with what you're doing and why does that give you, you think, maybe a, a leg up? Well, you know, when you take a look at machine learning and what its, what it's potential is, right? So for us, machine learning allows us to actually bring in the data so much faster. Again, our goal is to know that when you're making a transaction, we don't want to impede that transaction you're going to have with the merchant. Merchant, We want that experience to go smoothly, but we also want to make sure that the transaction is, is a valid one. So when you look at machine learning and its ability to start to actually do the speed in milliseconds to understand, to apply rules mm -hmm. in regards to this is what a fraudulent transaction looks like, this is what it doesn't look like, the ability to get closer to the transaction with those rule sets or the set of rules is really a big deal. Because again, it's milliseconds now. It's not after the fact, it's not chase, chasing, it's now I am going to prevent this up front if I can. And also with machine learning, the goal is for us, we call them false positives. It allows us to reduce false positives, again, to make sure that within our data, and when someone's doing a transaction, that card goes through. We don't want it to be like, you shown up in Chicago, now you're in London, and your card shuts down. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to say, that's a valid transaction. So again, the way we can alert people, is this really you? The way we can interact with them to make sure those transactions are all valid. Have you been able to introduce new variables into the machine learning process uh, because you have this capability now? Yeah, the ability when you look at machine learning, there's two ways to look at it. There's supervised learning, and there's unsupervised learning. And when we looked at it, we actually do a kind of a hybrid, which is semi-supervised. So we want to take what we know about fraud. Again, MasterCard, we know a lot. I mean, we've got close to a million rules somewhere that we can apply to transactions in different parts of the world. But the goal is to take that supervised learning as it teaches the machines what it needs to know, but then the unsupervised, what are those new points of fraud coming through? That really helps a lot, helps us move that needle. So again, for us, when we take a look at machine learning, it's that ability to say, we want the machine to learn, but we also want to supervise it to an extent. So again, we do a, we do a kind of a, as we experiment with machine learning, we want to make sure that we're always kind of looking at what we're getting in results to make sure it's proper um, and that the results are, are positive. Tony, I have to admit, I would not have put big data analytics and Dell together in, in the same sentence previously. <laughs> what, what are you doing yeah. in this area that, that we need to know about? No, absolutely, I'm saying, if you look at the platform infrastructure that we're providing for Nick, uh, 
uh, to achieve those millisecond response times. That's where you know the technologies that Dell has, be it our, our latest generation of compute platforms, our 14G servers, which we announced here this week, uh, as well as the Isilon technologies from a storage perspective. So we're really working very close partnership with partners like Cardera, NVIDIA, uh, to integrate that platform and make uh, his ability to go chase that uh, experience down to, to, so the machine can learn faster. Uh, that's really our engagement with, with great customers like, uh, like Mr. Mastercard. What, what platforms are you using for, for the machine learning? Well, when you take a look at it, again, it's not necessarily, uh, the platform itself, obviously we have done and we use it. There's other ones that we use, but the thing about it is, is pretty much Hadoop has helped us move the needle. Um, and that's because Hadoop's first wave was all about speed and flexibility. The next wave that we're starting to see is about machine learning in itself. The ability to learn what you know so you can apply it to larger data sets. So where Dell comes into play is to provide us the ability to have commodities, quote unquote, please don't hurt me, <laughs> but commodity type hardware or, you know, to be able to process, so your lower cost of ownership, which gives us the ability to process faster, larger sets of data. And then also, when we take a look at that, when we look at partners like a Cloudera, yeah. and you look at partners such as, you know, even the other distribution systems out there, whether it's Hortonworks or MapR, the ability to sit back and say they're creating workbenches that now go across and take these siloed tools that were in Hadoop, and now are creating a way to actually move them together seamlessly to again, take the power of each individual tool and then magnify it. Yeah. And again, when you got Python running, you've got uh, Spark and you've got Solar all working together, again, that speed, that efficiency is, is just opens up a lot more opportunities. Yeah. Now we're, we're seeing these vendors, and MapR just introduced a, sure. uh, an edge-oriented version of their suite. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing them begin to think about how do you, how does big data extend out to the to the edge? And we were talking earlier about the, the delay and uh, what an issue the delay is in customer experience and improving credit card transactions. How do you see these architectures evolving with, will more intelligence move out to the edge? Yeah, and that's actually what you want, to get to that experience, because when you move it to the edge, you're getting closer to the consumer, the customer itself, yeah. right? And that's what you want to be able to do is, now they can have an interaction, a real relationship with you. And when you move it to the edge and you get closer and closer, the opportunity now allows you to help that customer get what they're looking for, right? Again, the question is always, when you do that, is what you're, how you're interacting with that customer. Is it for their benefit, or is it for your benefit? So I think as you look at from a cultural standpoint, as you look at and you get to the edge, the question is, is how does the customer benefit more than potentially the vendor themselves, right? Because you, you don't always be putting out offers. What you want that customer is probably to get knowledge. Because the customer experience is about an emotional attachment and an intellectual attachment. And you want that person to be both stimulated and have that experience with you versus all you're trying to do is sell me another widget, yeah. right? So, so Tony, if, if um, if you're looking to offer some advice to somebody about embarking on the machine learning journey, yeah, it's a, uh, what would that be? Yeah, I, I think you know, certainly it is a journey. And I think the, the, the deployment of a machine learning is part of that journey. So start off with some, some data capture. Customers have been doing data, ca data capture for years. The type of data is changing. So the volume of data, I've got my traditional data, now I've got my unstructured data but then moving into the world of machine learning, you're seeing new tools, and I think there's been a fear that I've got to have a bunch of PhDs to help me on that journey. There's tools coming now, open source tools from Cloudera, that will allow you to start to understand what is my data sets, and I think, you know, we, we talked about this last night, is start small. Don't try to solve my entire data problem. Right. Start off with a small chunk that I can then measure results and then start building my skill set and my knowledge and start adding new parameters versus, hey, we're going to have this massive project and you know, we're not really ready for it. Uh, I think that's the advice we would see, is to start small and grow, and I think that's been Nick's experience. Well, you know, one of the things is when you do start small and you get focused, you also get the organization to buy in. One of the things that machine learning, there's an appeasement, is a cultural you know, acceptance. It is a black box, literally it's a black <laughs> server box, right, that sits there. So now it's like, how do you demystify this? How do you prove to the organization what they're seeing will help solve their problems? That's when you have to tie it to a metric. That's where you start to be able to say, let's get very focused on what we want to try this, that this machine predict for us, right? Yep. How this machine learns for us, whether it's fraud or new sales or how to get more efficient on a production line. If you start small at that point and you're able to measure it and you're able to actually sit back and say, 
the organization starts to get more and more trusting in what they're seeing. Because again, the impediment is it's a black box. Yeah, but we're typically seeing the start is in sales and marketing. Those are the, they're, the, they're really good logical pointing, starting points around uh, that journey. But it, it is a cultural buy-in though, right? Yeah, absolutely. You totally got to be all in. Yep. yep. And, and that's why if you're going to start, I usually, one of the suggestions we'll work with our clients, more in MasterCard, MasterCard advisors, is you probably want to go supervised. Supervised machine learning, meaning you know what the results are going to be, or should be. Yep. And then the system's like, oh, that's what it should be, I see it's happening, it's right, organization starts to buy in, and then you can start to move to that semi-supervised, let some of that unsupervised learning happen, be able to alert you, create the anomaly detections, and then it gives you the privilege to go forward. But really it's starting, it's like, if you got to get the buy-in, supervised machine learning is the way to go to get it, and then eventually work your way through. So the words yep. of wisdom are, you know, walk before you run. That's Absolutely. Take it slow. Gentlemen, thanks Thank for being with much. us here thanks on theCUBE. Appreciate Good it. Good to see you both. Thank you. Cheers. Thank we, you. Will, we will continue live here from Las Vegas, Dell EMC World 2017, right after this.